Hi, it's Jan Beta, and I'm back with the Commodore 128 that I uh, had a go at <laughs> in the last couple of videos, two I think. Built this power supply for it that I'm going to um, talk about in a second. And today the main course is um, to do the stuff I usually do to these old machines uh, to future-proof them, which is um, replacing the electrolytic capacitors, replacing uh, voltage regulators. I think there's one uh, 7812 in there that I can replace. Um, and I'm also going to replace the um, full bridge rectifier that's in here um, because these are the parts that um, age the most, I think, um, apart from the ICs that are in here. And about the ICs, I want to um, work on adding heat sinks to them. This particular Commodore 128, I think most of them that came in this form factor, have uh, a shield, a metal shield that also acts as a heatsink for the main ICs. Um, this has a, an add-on which prevents that for one of the um, graphics chips. So uh, I'm going to add heatsinks to that the course of this video. So, okay, without further ado, let's get into it. So you might have seen my video uh, where I built this, which is a replacement power supply for the Commodore 128 because it didn't, didn't come with the power supply and I couldn't test it otherwise. Um, I put this together using one of these plugs, which is the Euro plug that has um, the live wire and the uh, neutral wire, but it doesn't have uh, an earth wire. The problem is with my design that the little mean well um, power supply, switching power supply board that I used in this uh, needs a ground connection in some cases. It does work this way, but it's much safer to um, have an earth connection because in some uh, scenarios where you um, connect something to the computer that is running off this, that has a real um, earth connection, there could potentially be dangerous voltages um, coming out of this because there's only a capacitive coupling uh, on the 5 volt line uh, that would otherwise give you a very low current but high voltage uh, if there is no proper grounding on this one also. So what I'm going to do is replace this with a um, proper grounded plug. They look different uh, for each region, I guess. Um, so what you usually get here in Germany, in Europe, most of Europe, I think, um, are these that have ground pads here. So, yeah, this is earth. And we should add this to here. And these have an earth uh, connection here which is it's also marked on the circuit board so it is marked here this screw hole has um, little pads going around it which are meant to be the earth connection I'm just going to replace this cable with uh, the other cable so um, and put a ground connection on my little uh, circuit board but the more interesting part, <coughs> probably, is uh, replacing the caps and future-proofing this thing. So I'm going to take it apart again. Opening this, you have to be very careful because there are these hinges, which are luckily not broken in mine, even though I open it quite brutally, uh, on the sides of this top uh, case part with the keyboard. Uh, that easily break if you are prying too hard, so they are clipping under the sides here. So be very careful about these, and um, what I did was I didn't close it up fully uh, while working on it, so um, that was probably a good idea. Usually you have a little uh, shield here, and you have 
the big shield that's going over all of it. So we don't have much room uh, to work here and the components should be pretty much the same size or at least not uh, protruding too much. I think there are little holes, little cutouts for the big capacitors. So we're on the, we're gonna be good there. Yeah, there are. Yeah, there's plenty of room so we can use any size of caps we want, basically. I think we're going to be fine just using what I have in my uh, stock here. By the way, I, I found out that this is indeed a factory mod, even though it looks pretty sloppy with the um, cable running here and stuff like that. Uh, most European uh, Commodore 128s have that. So it's the DIN ROM, I think, the character ROM, with the um, thinner uh, character set that's built in here. For whatever reason, I don't really know. Uh, yeah, this also is factory. These EPROMs are in there from factory. This is the mod, the graphics mod I described in the first video where I first inspected that. So while working on these, I'm using my uh, ESD wrist strap here to not uh, harm any of this, although it's pretty unlikely. It's a bit messed up with the this tape over the, the stuff here, and I don't know. I don't really know. It looks a bit, bit uh, fuzzy. But yeah, I'm. I think I'm going to clean some parts of the board. It's pretty dusty over here, and on the connectors. Yeah, there's some rust here which I can clean off. There's going to be another video where I um, clean the, the case, the plastics, and um, clean up the board more. I think this is uh, not not so much a cosmetical operation that I'm doing today, but uh, a technical, electrical thing. So I'm going to replace the caps, <coughs> which I'm going to start with by removing, of course, removing all the connectors and then uh, removing the board from the case. It's screwed in with um, the same screws that the shielding is held in, which is a nice design really. <laughs> so I should be able to get this out somehow. Yes. This has the problem that it also has a shield from the back side, so we're going to remove that too. And in order to do that, there's these little uh, hinges little bent parts of metal that we have to bend to the side, I think, to free this They're all around here. Okay, there we go. We're free! And there's uh, some cardboard in there, some paper rather, to prevent it from shorting out against the board. If you put a huge hunk of metal on a PCB from the back side, it's uh, pretty likely to short out stuff if you don't have insulation on there. Well done, Commodore. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to um, take the big electrolytic capacitors and replace them with new quality ones. I usually use um, Panasonic. I have some um, actual caps from Wishai, which are I think the best ones you can get at the moment uh, for actual caps and uh, yeah basically I'm going to replace all of them there's not too many of them on there and I'm also going to replace the um, bridge rectifier and I'm going to replace I think this should be 78 no it's not there's a 7812 this uh, diode uh, Thingo. Uh, I'm sorry, this is a transistor thingo that uh, is here for the um, cassette port for um, driving the motor in the data set, I think is the uh, main purpose of this thing. Uh, this is the same circuitry as in the Commodore 64 and in other uh, Commodore computers that have the data set port. I think it's basically the same circuit in all of them. Might be mistaken there, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there is the 7812 in here, which is here for the uh, SID, which is over here. 
So basically I'm going to replace the electrolytic capacitors using my uh, desoldering station. So let's go! Oh, and I do this one at a time uh, to not get the values confused and to get the polarity right. Uh, there is, there are little uh, plus markings on the board. Uh, you have to take care that you use the same capacitance. That's important. The voltage rating uh, should be the same or higher. I think if you go too high, the um, overall characteristics of the capacitors change a bit, but I don't think it makes much difference in, in uh, this. It's not so important in this uh, circuit that the capacitors are spot on, so you can use uh, way higher voltages without any problem. I used that in, in Commodore 64s as well, and there, is, uh, there, is, there isn't any problem, basically. So, uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. By the way, there's some funny uh, bodges on the underside too. Which is, it is all uh, production stuff. There's some nice scratches here on there, which are probably not from production. There's some hot glue stuff on there, some dust. And some scratches, but yeah, overall it looks pretty, pretty nice, I think. So let's see, where's our cap? There's our cap. These are all pretty low voltage, so we don't have to be afraid to get shocked, I guess. I'm going to put a list of capacitors in the description. So there's, you can buy them. There's also um, some places that sell kits with replacement capacitors. So you're going to, maybe I'm, I'm going to link in uh, some places you can get the kits. Okay, that's the first one. I'm going from big to small, I think, to, to not get confused.
so that's basically it, I think. I don't know what's under here, so I'm just going to try to remove it gently. No, there's no other cap. And the, wow, this is pretty. <laughs> uh, this is not very nice. There's some electrical tape to isolate the pins there. Yeah, all right. I kind of want to get a sneak peek into the RF modulator here. Let's see. We can just. I don't know if it's soldered at any point there. It doesn't seem to be. Let's see if we can just get it off. Some brute force approach. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay, there we go. And of course, there's two capacitors in there that, yeah, I think I kind of want to replace two. So, let's see. I have to desolder the whole thing, which is held in with these huge blobs here, and these are the connections to the uh, graphics. Okay, so this is going pretty well, I guess. I don't think it's that trivial if you uh, don't have one of these uh, desoldering stations. Though. This works pretty nicely. Okay, so I think I should go in there. Let's see if they are loose already. This one, yeah, this one is. No. Nope. This one isn't. This one is. This one as well. So we have to go in here with my soldering iron and the solder wick. And I'm going to try to remove the rest of the solder there. Yeah, it should be clear. So. See if we can get it off. Some strategic wiggling. And you can see that all the parts are indeed wiggling. I think we need to add some more here. There we go. It wasn't too bad. It's pretty rusty under there, so, so that's a good uh, look at this. It's a bit uh, time to clean that up too. We don't want to get these pins bent. So here's a little modulator and we want to get this shielding off here. These are sitting pretty tightly on there. Oh, okay. There's some surface mount stuff on the bottom here. Which is interesting. Surface mount stuff has been lo around longer than many people think. So it just wasn't used that widely in uh, larger electronics as it is today. So, well, yeah. So the negative is facing this way to the little connectors there. It's a 220 microfarad. Okay, this is a 10 microfarad one. The small one. So there seems to have been some liquid damage. Uh, on this because it's all rusty. It's not all rusty, it's not that bad really, but uh, there's some some rust on here. I think I'm gonna scrub this a bit. I, I, I think it doesn't matter much if there's rust on the sides and on the underside there. 
is going to clean it up so there's no... No rust that is electrically uh, important there. I think the, the the top part. I might go back and clean this. Running all the velcro. <laughs> obviously, isn't a good thing. Could go in there with uh, something like vinegar, which is uh, a nice thing to remove rust, I guess. Not really not. I think this, these are all factory mods, by the way. Let's take a closer look. So here's two little um, ceramic disc capacitors that um yeah they they added them in as decoupling caps i guess um they scraped away the solar mask here to have the um, ground plane of the of the pcb and solder directly to that and i think this is factory stuff so it's uh, it doesn't look nice but they they rushed production a lot i think because they only um the engineers were given only very very little time Legendarily, they designed this whole um, computer in five months, I think, which makes this even more amazing. So I'm putting back in our little modulator here. Cleaned up the board reasonably well, I guess. So, let's see. And it still goes in. So I'm not filling up these uh, pads there entirely. This isn't really necessary. And it's going to be easier to remove so next up our little voltage regulator here which is the standard 7812 i am going to replace it with e the um uh two ampere equivalent just to be sure because these can age and they can fail and if they fail they uh, basically put the input voltage on the output so that's not a uh, very good failure mode if you have some uh, irreplaceable electronics hooked up to it. I'm also going to replace the uh, rectifier, which I have seen fail in these machines. Actually, my VIC-20 uh, had a failed voltage regulator, a uh, bridge rectifier in there that I had to replace before um, further harm was done. It was pretty hard to troubleshoot because I didn't think these things uh, would break. But basically what they are, are um, four diodes. And um, as we all know, or maybe diodes uh, can fail. They can, they get quite hot, dissipate a lot of heat, and um, they can fail because they are semiconductors. So, yeah, that's not a... a not Usually they, they don't fail, but I've seen... Uh, at least two of these fail in Commodore machines recently, so um, yeah, to be safe, I'm going to replace it with a way over the top thousand volt rated uh, one. You don't have to do that, but um, yeah, I'm doing it anyway because I have. Uh So, and I lifted a trace there on the uh, bridge rectifier because I was too impatient. These are not easy to unsolder because uh, they, yeah, basically they are huge. And I think we should um, put these traces. There's one coming from the power switch, obviously, going into the bridge rectifier. The 9 volts AC go directly into the bridge rectifier, I think. And there's one going to this uh, coil here, I think. So we are going to measure where that goes to and then recreate it on the back side, on the, on the flip side of the board, I guess. There's bodges anyway, so it doesn't, doesn't matter much. It's a bit... Uh, yeah, I tend to be a bit impatient, so that's what you get. Don't be as impatient as I am. So here's me doing some board repair. 
Uh, I'm using the leg of uh, one of the big capacitors because it should be able to, it should be uh, strong enough for the amperage that's going through there. And I'm just going to put it in here. So, okay, that went pretty well. On the other side, I'm going to solder to the leg uh, of the uh, bridge rectifier. I keep forgetting that word. So there's our coil and uh, our trace going there. I already scraped away some of the trace. I'm going to see where the trace goes using my uh, multimeter so it's not going through the choke but it's going to this little via here so we have to put a little connection from here to here find me a piece of wire come on this is an electronics lab there has to be wire somewhere hang on okay got some wire So, now we're going to put in our uh, bridge rectifier. Hey, I remembered the word. <laughs> and then we're going to attach these to the, to the little um, pad here. First rule of the Botch Wire Club, don't panic. It's all going to work out. So here's what I'm using. Um, KBPC 610, 1000 volts, 6 amperes, a bit over the top for the job, but uh, they have kind of like the same form factor, they are a little bigger, as you're going to see. So okay, I think my botch wires look better than the ones that were in there from factory, so <clears throat> not, I'm not too worried about this. Let's just see if the, if the connection is there. Yep. <laughs> okay, switch was on. Yeah, so that's kind of like what we wanted. Nice. So this should work, I guess. Nothing to worry about. So let's replace the 7812 there. Wow, that was pretty perfect. <laughs> okay, there we go. So. Okay. There we go. And always remember, uh, to make sure all the little component legs are away. That's why I always have this uh, plastic thingy here where I put everything in, or ideally I do. Um, because they can, it, it can be pretty hard to troubleshoot if you have a leg of a capacitor sitting on the board there and shorting something out and you have no idea what's happening. It's okay, some more alcohol into the air. nearly as good as new I guess I think it's time to to um, test if this still works okay so I'm turning on the power supply so this should totally... come on okay so it isn't working anymore is it Oh man. Okay, I had a short moment of panic there, but it was just, uh, I think it was just the um, bridge rectifier wasn't soldered in completely, so that um, there, there has to be contact on both sides of the board for the um, AC input to pass through it. So uh, I didn't flow the solder enough because the legs are pretty thick. So let's see. If 
goes on now. Now we should plug in the power supply. Okay, it's plugged in. Okay, let's see. Hope it still works. I really, really hope it still works. Come on. And we totally get a black screen. What is that? I'm still not getting anything. Five volt rails, okay. I'm not getting anything on the twelve volts rail. There. Okay, so here's what happened. Um, because I'm a complete and utter idiot, I uh, placed this capacitor in the wrong polarity. So it got pretty hot. It didn't filter the um, rectified voltage correctly, I guess. So uh, I said um, that jokingly that um, I was a bit disappointed that this uh, worked from the start. Now it doesn't. Uh, we still have a black screen. And uh, yeah, I poked around a bit. The voltages are correct, so my uh, little botch worked. Um, I learned a bit about the sport uh, during my uh, preliminary troubleshooting here. It doesn't say anything at the moment, so it's 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 uh, giving a little pop when the sound chip uh, starts, I think, and that's that. All the major chips get warm. The so supply voltages um, measured on the user port are all there. They are there on the major chips. Uh, I reseated some of the chips. There might be some, I don't know, there might be some short on the board. Uh, I didn't check uh, in between changing caps and stuff. There was the very first capacitor I changed, so uh, yeah. It seems like everything works, uh, but there's no pictures. So it might be that I missed something in the RF modulator. It might be that our um, VIG-2 blew up. Uh, that's where we should get a picture from in this mode. Uh, might be something else shorted out and prevents this from booting up. So I'm not going to troubleshoot this in this video because uh, it's already a pretty long video and I kind of... this would have worked if I... it, it wasn't for my uh, uh, fault here. I'm pretty sure I've, I've done this a couple of times to um, different computers and uh, it worked every time, I think. Uh, so this is the first one I messed up, which is pretty much a pity because, uh, yeah, it's one of the rarer ones, so uh, yeah, shame on me for doing that. Of course, it might also be something completely different. I'm going to um, get into troubleshooting this in a separate video. So um, <laughs> I have to read up on, on Commodore 128 troubleshooting and I'm going to give my knowledge to you in the next video. So I um, hope you enjoyed this anyway. I'm sorry I messed this up. Uh, but I decided to, to show this because yeah, it can happen to... to everybody basically especially me because I'm pretty much uh, an impatient and pretty low on uh, focus uh, focusing on stuff person so if you're doing something like this pay attention to the details and uh, don't mess it up basically so yeah so much for now I hope I get this working again in one of the next videos I don't know Th this is going to be probably going to be a longer um, effort, so maybe the next video is going to be something else, not uh, Commodore 128 related, which I can make uh, in less time. So anyway, maybe the, the next video is going to be something else, but the video after that or a video after the next video is going to be about this thing and um, troubleshooting and hopefully repairing it. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this anyway. Uh, if you want to support me, check out my Patreon page. Uh, I might need some spare parts for this one. I don't know yet. Uh, always appreciate it. 
there is some behind the scenes stuff and I'm doing a little vlog thing there and you might see something about this there sometime. Um, yeah, support my Patreon. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. There's a lot of uh, Commodore and other retro computer repairs and also some audio stuff. Um, yeah, so much for now. Thanks for watching. I'm your Beta. See you next time. Bye. Why am I holding this screwdriver? I don't really know. Pointing at things. What? 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 What?